Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the anatomy of language circuit and its pathology, which is nothing but aphasia or difficulty in speaking. So, first thing is we have to understand the important structures which are related to the language circuit. First thing is we have to hear the speech. And the second thing is the heard speech has to be analyzed. And the third thing would be the analyzed speech should have an output. So that is the speech output. So hearing speech, the words we speak are heard through the ear and these sound signals are converted into electrical signals via the primary auditory cortex. And to analyze speech, these impulses are, con are comprehended to meaningful words. So that is done by the Bernicke's area which is there in the temporal lobe and then we have the speech output which was done by the motor speech area or the Broca's area in the inferior frontal gyrus and the fourth thing is the connecting circuit between the motor and the sensory speech areas which is done by the arcuate fasciculus so this is done by the arcuate fasciculus so all these are the important structures which are concerned with uh, speech or language now we have to understand the anatomy by drawing and we will learn how this speech circuit happens so now i am drawing the lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere and this structure which i am highlighting in yellow is nothing but the sylvian fissure which divides the lobes into frontal and temporal okay so this is the sylvian fissure so now next i am going to draw a fissure which is going to separate the frontal from the parietal lobe which is nothing but the central sulcus so this is the central sulcus so now we have defined the boundaries of frontal and temporal lobe so within the frontal lobe we have a superior frontal sulcus and a mid and an inferior frontal sulcus which divides the entire frontal lobe into superior frontal middle frontal and inferior frontal gyrus and in the inferior frontal gyrus we have this shaded area in blue which is called as the Broca's area so this is the Broca's area area number 44 and 45 and that is there in the inferior frontal gyrus now in the temporal region we have two uh, lateral uh, we have two sulci we dividing it into superior middle and inferior temporal gyrus there is another inferior temporal sulcus which is present in the posterior part so this is the primary auditory area area number 42 where the speech signals are received from the ear and from the just anterior to that we have the Wernicke's area or area number 22 this primary auditory area is also called as the Herschel's gyrus now whatever we speak is heard by the area 42 is analyzed in area 22 and it is conducted to area 44 that is from the sensory to the motor cortex it is conducted by the arcuate fasciculus which is a conducting fiber which is an association fiber so that is the uh, anatomy of language circuit so now any lesion in these parts is going to present as aphasia uh, we are going to primarily discuss about three aphasias, Bernicke's aphasia, Broca's aphasia and the third thing would be the conduction aphasia. So any lesion in these three areas, three primary important areas is going to present with these kind of lesions. So we are going to discuss it in, uh, terms, in four terms. First thing is how the comprehension is affected. Second thing is the speech output and the third thing would be the repetition how repetition is involved and the fourth thing is the mood of the patient so first and foremost remember that Wernicke's area is the sensory area Broca's is motor area and conduction is going to uh, involve the arcuate fasciculus so any lesion in the uh, superior temporal gyrus is going to present as Wernicke's aphasia where comprehension will be impaired and the speech output will be increased because they will not understand what you are speaking so there will be an unintelligent speech and repetition will obviously be affected because they are not able to understand what we speak. So definitely repetition will be affected and the mood of the patient will be elated. They will not understand what is happening. So they will be elated. Whereas in Broca's aphasia, the speech output is reduced and the comprehension is intact. Repetition will be impaired. Why? Because the word output itself is reduced. The output, the motor speech area is affected. 
so the word output is reduced so then there will be depression and repetition is also affected so this is because depression happens because patient understands his problem he is not able to communicate properly so they become depressed so what is this conduction aphasia this conduction aphasia is nothing but a lesion involving the arcuate fasciculus where it has features of both wernicke's and broca so there will be some amount of comprehension impairment but not severe to that of wernicke's there will be some amount of motor speech output impairment but the most severe thing would be the repetition the repetition would be grossly involved and the mood there is nothing to talk about that so this will summarize the uh, three lesions thank you